Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our second uh, breakout session of the day. Uh, I just want to uh, let you all know again that these sessions are being automatically uh, recorded and they will be available at the end of the session. Uh, I'm also uh, saving the chat transcript uh, for each of those. So if you um, are asking questions, um, we'll be saving that as well. Uh, so I will go ahead and turn it over to our presenter, Steve Green. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our or my presentation on uh, Google Data Studio. My name is Steve Green. I'm the senior director with our assessment, accountability, and evaluation team at the San Diego County Office of Education. And we are often in the role of um, not only supporting our districts in terms of um, professional learning and technical assistance and so on, but on the reporting end as a county office looking at um, the performance of you know, schools, districts, student groups, and so on. And um, my presentation today is really gonna zero in on Google Data Studio, which we found as to be an effective tool for some quick and easy visualizations for some of the reporting needs that we have. And so um, I do have a slide deck. The slide deck uh, will have a bit of a how-to. So after this session, if you're interested in maybe um, engaging with Data Studio, I have some screenshots and some basically a step-by-step -step that will get you up and running. So feel free to um, utilize the slides as needed. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start and please, um, enter any questions into the chat, I'm happy to stop as I go along. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of an overview and then an actual demo with uh, a data set and build out a very quick um, uh, data table to show you how quickly and easily you can use Data Studio. So you'll, you'll actually see that modeled. So um, why use Data Studio? Um, Certainly, there are a lot of tools out on the market, and I'll talk about some of those in a moment, but um, I'm going to share with you a use case scenario that, um, that exists within our office at the county office. And um, often, we have releases of data from the Department of Education, annual data reports that are released through DataQuest, and um, those provide snapshots around kind of summative measures, annual measures of maybe things around student performance, district performance, and so on. And we, as a county office, um, that oftentimes is our sole source of data, unless we're partnering directly with the district, right? And so we provide uh, reports for our board of education, for our superintendent and his executive cabinet, you know, as, as um, data are released. And Comparing outcomes, for example, if we want to do a countywide snapshot on, on, for example, graduation rates and outcomes around maybe A to G performance, all of that data is available in DataQuest, and certainly there are research files that are downloadable that can be utilized. And um, what I hope to show you is a way that you can utilize those research files to quickly customize reports that when you're thinking about your end user, allows them to engage in some interactive tools that they can answer some of their own data questions. So um, we're trying to move from a, a process in our office where we're creating static reports that are essentially PDFs of you know, outcome data to a, maybe a more robust tool that allows users to get that high level overview, but then maybe if they have some specific questions, can utilize the data studio to um, customize some reports for their own purposes. And so that's our use case, really. It's a, a county office team that's trying to get data into the hands of individuals that want to maybe answer some of their very own specific questions in a way that a canned report that we might have developed um, doesn't fully answer. So um, just to, to talk about the why, right? So in terms of data quest, if we wanted to get into something like um, annual enrollment data, right? Uh, you use the dashboard panel on data quest and you have to drill down, right? So you select whether you want county level or state level or district level, school level, whatever it might be, right? You would choose the subject, in this case, annual enrollment data. And then in data quest, the first thing that happens, you start to have to, um, you know, filter down already to maybe a specific county office or a, a county region, right? And then once you do that, 
um, you do get to some disaggregated reporting, right? Here's an example of enrollment by grade um, across uh, a county, and you're seeing the, you know, the student populations and so on. This is great information. Um, again, many end users, this is how they're interacting to get information, right? They, they're going to DataQuest and they're getting this information. But um, what ends up happening pretty quickly is once you have one view done, there may be another question or some more information that someone might want to say, for example, how um, let's look specifically at students with disabilities, right? And that requires some more toggling between different views, applying different filters, and then getting into a, a completely different display of information. And so unlike um, a, more of a dashboard, a tool like Tableau or other products, you're constantly on DataQuest having to toggle back and forth. And um, that can get frustrating, that can become tedious. And depending on um, how much time folks have, they may end up just giving up at a certain point, right? And so we were trying to think about how can we quickly and efficiently get some data out there that um, people could look at and filter a little more quickly without having to go back and forth. And so that, uh, you know, the easy way or the hard way, right? If we think about data quest, maybe not being as user-friendly for some of these, um, for some of the output reporting, then what might an easier way be? And there are a lot of options for data visualization tools. Um, I've put a few in here. We know that it, it can go beyond this, but these are what I would consider some current common um, options for folks, right? Certainly Excel. Uh, research files could be loaded into Excel. There's a lot that can be done with pivot tables and other customized um, tools that would allow for the building of tables and charts and graphs, right? Um, that is, I mean, we do that a lot. Typically what ends up happening though, is that's not necessarily viewable on the web, right? It, it's a little harder to share that. And depending on who your end user is, they may not know Excel to the degree that maybe they could do additional customizing, right? If they wanted to um, have some different views. And so um, I would call Excel limited um, from that standpoint, right? Data Studio, which we're gonna be looking at today is not as robust as say Power BI or Tableau which have a lot of options to them. However, the fact that it's um, basic in terms of its complexity allows someone who's trying to um, bring in data files and develop an output, it's very quick, it's very easy, and um, it's mostly drag and drop. So that is a, a great, um, great option for folks. Also, you'll notice that it's free. Right? So this is free, a free platform on the web. And so there's no subscription license required. And it's not limited in terms of, um, you know, in some tools, there might be a limited set of features available unless you have a subscription and then you get the full suite. Um, everything is available for free. And um, that is, I think, great when, when there are limited resources in terms of uh, dollars. Um, also, it's viewable on the web, right? And so that is helpful because you can create interactive dashboards that, or charts and graphs that could be um, shared with other users who could interact and obviously customize and, and um, answer some of their very own specific questions. The security options, certainly things could be protected or public. Again, just like anything in, in Google, whether you're working Google Docs or Google Sheets, right? You can limit who the who the uh, users are, who has access, who has editing access, who has view only access. Um, there are some data limits, but you'll notice there it's fairly large, so up to 5 million cells. So if we think about most of the work that we do in our office and the types of reporting that we're dealing with, um, that's more than sufficient. Okay. Um, the two other tools listed here, data visualization tools, Power BI and Tableau, they are obviously almost what I would call, you know, the standard. And I know our partners at Riverside County Office of Ed do a fantastic job with Tableau. And if it hasn't happened already, I know there's going to be a session around that. Um, Power BI, our, our, dis, our county office um, in our IT side does use Power BI. And we have um, customized dashboards and projects that utilize Power BI. And where we live in, in my department and the work we do, we're kind of in between. And Data Studio has, um, at this point in time, kind of fulfilled a need that doesn't require a lot of professional learning and technical expertise. 
So um, that was a, a quick flyby and I apologize if I'm going fast. I just want to kind of set some context, but actually get into the tool and show you what it looks and what it looks like and how easy it is to use. Um, so a little bit more about Data Studio. So it's a free tool. It contains a drag and drop editor. And then um, these other points here just allow you to get a, a better sense of the what can be done. For today's purpose, because we have a limited amount of time, I'm essentially going to go in and walk you through the process of starting your uh, visualization, pulling in some data, and then going through the drag and drop editor to essentially create uh, a data table right now. Um, that's what we'll have time for, but know that all of these other options are certainly available. And there's a lot of great help and uh, YouTube videos and other resources that we found to be extremely helpful when you, know, you get yourself into, hey, I wanna learn how to do this. Um, you know, a two or three minute video generally is sufficient to get you going. So um, what I wanna do real quickly is just jump out this, we're gonna get into how to work in Data Studio, but I wanna give you an example here of what it looks like in terms of a finished product. And um, again, this is not sophisticated at all. This is a pretty straightforward um, utilization of this tool. But um, this example is using the CDE's release of the grad 2020 graduation cohort outcome data. So um, what I've created here for the purpose of demonstration today is just a quick, um, uh, you'll see a four page report around the adjusted cohort graduation rate. And page one here is simply using the language from CDE that accompanies this report. So when you go into the description of the report and the details, this information essentially just copy and paste it in here. So um, in terms of uh, common practice currently, I try to ensure that we have the information that describes what folks are going to see on page one and navigation within Data Studios right up here at the top. So you'll see this is the information page. You can name each of the pages. Um, by toggling here, we go into page two, which here is a data table. This right now contains all the information that's in the research file, but you'll notice, unlike in DataQuest, where you might see multiple columns for many different um, outcomes, this view is has been limited to just the number of uh, number and percent of students graduating with a regular high school diploma, right? So rather than having all those elements, we're just looking at this view only. And then up at the top are the various filters that can be applied um, for this particular report. So, right, pretty straightforward filtering tools, right? Um, this is the entity level. So in the research file, we have everything from state level, county, district, and school. So for example, if we wanted county only, right? Just simply click on that. What this will do is this will refresh and the view now would be counties um, outcomes, right? And here are counties here. You'll notice that all the student groups are listed. If we had an interest, for example, in a specific student group, we might say, let's see how, um, let's say we have an interest in English learner students, And already, for those of you familiar with DataQuest, you can see that this is where this functionality um, is uh, a little more easy to use than in DataQuest. DataQuest, you'll be talking back and forth between the report options, having to go in, select a student group, and then exit out. Here, we have all this functioning on one page. And we're also able to see all the county offices, or not county offices, excuse me, all the counties in one view here. And you'll notice that um, in some instances, there might not be any data and others, uh, the, the percentages or the raw numbers, the, the total numbers are here. These columns can be sorted, right? So ascending and descending. So that's functionality that's built into the, the, the tool itself, right? And so again, when sometimes as a county office, we may want to compare and say, you know, where are there bright spots across the state or even within maybe we're in a county view and you want to look at the districts. This is challenging to do in data class. Certainly can be done in Excel with pivot tables and other pieces. But again, thinking about the end user, if a county superintendent wanted to know or their executive cabinet, this is a tool that we can share with them and they can pretty quickly drill into information that is specific to something they may want to know about, right? Um, 
You know, do we want to look at alternative school status only? Right, so that's a filter that could be applied. And again, these filters would exist in data quest, so there's nothing new. We didn't apply something here that isn't already in the research file. But again, this gives us the option of doing it right here in this particular view without having to toggle back and forth between the report options. Um, so that's the functionality. I mean, this is very straightforward. I'm just going to go to another example here. Um, page three, um, you know, there's a focus on students who are graduating um, with UCCSU readiness, right? If we think about the A to G outcomes. So this is another report that allows us just to look at that. So we separated those into separate views from the graduation rate we're looking now just at. So what's, what's one outcome, right? And the A to G piece. Uh, I just want to point out too that charts and graphs are certainly, um, as I mentioned, many different visualizations can be um, embedded in here as well. This happens to just be on a separate page, but all the filters and um, things can be applied to then um, represent the data in this visual format. So that's the end user piece. I just wanted you to have a, you all to have a sense of what that looks and sounds like, um, you know, utilize. Again, I hope you see that that is very straightforward, very simple. Um, again, I would say compared to Tableau and Power BI, uh, a user on the, on the user end that maybe isn't that is as sophisticated with some of the, um, the features and functionality. This is pretty straightforward, you know, kind of point and click and um, very easy for folks to navigate. It's been our experience that people like the simplicity of this. And again, just depends on what you're trying to get to, but for some of these state level research files, this is a, a pretty nice output that um, folks are can engage with quickly and easily without a lot of, um, you know, a, a training or, or requirements to, to understand it. Okay, great uh, question just popped in around the DAS schools. Um, um, so any of the filters that exist here that, that we have applied, so for example, like the district alternative school status would be in the research file. So um, any of these filters that are here would be items that exist within the, um, the data that we're importing. So we're not applying additional filters or um, at least for, for this purpose, we're using everything that's built in. So for example, charters, whether it's a charter school or non-charter, all of those are in that data file that we're importing. And then I'll show you in a moment how you can build, th these are called controllers, the controller within um, Data Studio, how you can drag any of those data fields and, and create the, those controllers. So hope that answers the question. So with that, um, I'm just gonna point out that in the slide deck, you're gonna see essentially a step-by-step -step is gonna show you how to go through. I'm actually gonna do the live demo of this, um, but I do wanna share a couple of items just so that you uh, get a sense of what I'm doing before I get in and, and, and start. So I'm just gonna present a couple more pieces. Um, for the purpose of the demo, I'm gonna use suspension count um, information. So this is the 2019 2020 suspension data that was released by CDE um, uh, not too long ago. And this particular data file is the count by most serious offense. So there's five categories in that. So we're going to be looking at that data. That's, that's the underlying data set. And for the purpose of the demo right now, we have reduced that data in Excel to exclusively San Diego County data. And the reason for that is the it'll just load a little faster and I'll be able to move a little more quickly. Um, but just understand that the entire state data file could be imported in here with absolutely zero issue. My concern was more around bandwidth as I'm trying to present and do this through Zoom and build at the same time. So we've reduced that to just San Diego County. And then um, these are all the reporting categories that exist in terms of student groups, right? And so we have the race and ethnicity categories. We also have um, a gender um, categories, you'll notice there are some new beginning with 1920 um, data sets. Now there are two additional components that didn't exist previously. And then we have some of the programmatic like English learners, students with disabilities, migrant, foster, and so on. So for the purpose of this data set, 
not only did I limit it to San Diego County, rather than pulling in all the reporting categories for the demo, I limited it to just this. And again, simply to keep the number of records smaller so that it would be more efficient in building this out in real time. So you're gonna see that we have these categories, um, these student group categories, as well as total. Um, so just wanted you to know that because when you, I'm building this, you may say, hey, there's things that I don't see in here. That's intentional and that's by design. Do know that certainly if we were building this out for our end users, we would, we would have all of the categories represented. So just want to point that out. So how do we start? What do we do? So um, first off, I would say you'd want to have your data set. So um, that's already been downloaded. As I said, we kind of modified it for the purpose of today. But um, the data studio is, the link is here, datastudio.google.com. And that will get you in. Um, you would need to sign in to a Google account. So we have our county office accounts. So um, that's how I'm currently in here. And essentially you start with a blank report or at least for this purpose, right? But there are, there are templates that are available certainly. So if you wanted to look at those templates, if you're gonna be doing something specific, but for this purpose, I'm gonna start with a blank report. And the first thing that happens is you, you come into your workspace and um, that loaded and you'll notice step number two right here is it asks you for your data source, right? And that makes sense. We can't build out a visualization or do any editing without the underlying data. And so I just want to point out here, let me see if I can move that up. There are many options available and you're going to see um, a number of uh, different ways or different types of data sets that could be imported. For the purpose of today, um, I'm going to go to a Google Sheet because the data that I prepared is already in a Google Sheet. But do know that you could be uploading an Excel workbook in CSV format or any other um, the research files in CSV format. You could save those to your local server or um, you know, your hard drive on your system and then upload that in directly as well. But for this demo, it's in a, a Google Sheet and this is it right here. So suspension data. When I click on that, similar to any data import, it's going to ask you a couple of questions, right? Do you want that first row as headers? Yes, this data file does have headers in that top row. And um, it, it asks to include any hidden or filtered cells. Right now, I don't think that I have any, but I'm going to go ahead and just leave that. The default is to include it. And that's it for the data. We're ready to go. Simply going to hit add. And now what's going to happen, my workspace is here. You're going to notice that there's a data table that has automatically populated. And what is pulled in is the information from the very first um, column, which is the academic year. And then there's a record count. So that's just the total number of records in this data file. Again, I limited it. If we were looking at the state level file, there would be you know, potentially a few hundred thousand um, records in there. This is what's going, this, this um, table right here is what I'm gonna to use to build out what you saw in the example of the graduation cohort data. So we're gonna, I'm just simply gonna right now just expand that. And I'm gonna drop this down a little bit. And so that's going to be my workspace. This is where the information will populate as I'm working over here on the right. So on the right hand side, we have a panel that is essentially all the information that exists in that data file. So you'll see here, it says data source. This is the, the file we imported, right? That's the data file that is pulling from. And then all of the available fields, this panel on the far right, are essentially the column headers, right? Each of the columns now that exist in that research file are available here. And you'll notice that um, in terms of the preparation of this file, I did not go in and rename or modify any of the headers that was intentional. I'm gonna show you how we can actually literally do that in the tool. Um, in the past, in, in working with some of our um, files and many of you probably do this, you may rename things so they're more intuitive for the end user or modify it so it fits better in a column. And so um, that can be done certainly in the source data file. You can certainly do that there. But I wanted to show that you can also do that and manipulate it super quickly right here in Data Studio. So the, the process here is pretty straightforward. Again, this is our, this is our output on the left. Here's the, the, the raw information from the data file on the right. And so 
I'm just going to show how quickly it is to move information over. Academic year is already there. You'll notice that's here. And see where it says dimension? The dimensions will essentially become the elements that populate the data file. So let's say, for example, I wanted to include county name. I would simply bring this field over from the available fields and drop it into the dimensions. And now you'll notice the data table has updated. And next to academic year, I have county name. Now you'll notice there's only two, two um, records here or, or um, two elements, San Diego and the state. I failed to mention we left the state information in, but we pulled out all other county um, information, right? But what you would see here if you had the entire research file is every single county would be represented, right? Now, this is local information. So we have district information. So I'd like to have the districts represented here. So underneath, you'll notice that where you drag these, um, it, it will re, um, resort. So if I want that underneath or next to on the, the county name, I would drop it underneath. And now it's going to populate to the right on the data table. And you'll notice that I'm able to resize the columns just like in, in any um, a, a data workbook or spreadsheet, you can resize the columns as appropriate. And the next thing I might want is uh, what's called the reporting category, right? Those are those student groups, right? So I'm gonna bring that over and that's gonna be the next element in my data field. So I'm gonna make one mention here. Um, I did in the, the data field, I, or in, excuse me, in the source data file, I did rename the um, reporting categories. If you recall, let me go back here. English learners in the source file was SE, students with disabilities was SD. Um, end users may not be familiar with those codes. And so I did go in um, in advance and rename those. So they are more intuitive for end users like foster youth, migrant, um, economically disadvantaged English learners and so on. So I did do that in the source file. Had I not done that, that would currently show these codes, right? And so that is, um, again, uh, something that might be done in the source file in advance. All right, I'm going to pause right here because I want to do a couple of things to show you um, how we can clean this up and, and also rename these categories, or excuse me, the headers to be a little more intuitive. So notice reporting category. Folks um, end users may not be familiar with that. They may be familiar with something like a name like student group. So what we can do by simply hovering right here over that, um, that element, you'll get a pencil icon. Clicking on that brings up a, a text box that allows me to rename. And you'll notice that in real time, that now says student group, right? District name. You'll notice there's no space, oops, hold on. Um, there's no pencil, there's no space. Maybe I do want a space between there so I can, right? It's intuitive enough, but maybe I just visually would prefer to have that space. So you can see that very quickly and easily, all of that information can be modified um, on the fly. Um, let me bring in one more element. Let's say I want the total suspensions, right? So I have a numeric value in there. That's the raw number, right? The oops, hold on, sorry about that. There we go. The raw number or total number of suspensions then by these student groups, right? And if I wanted the suspension rate, Right. If I want the corresponding percentage, I could bring that over as well. Bring that in. And so now I have total number of suspensions and um, the, the, the rate that goes along with that. So I'm going to pause there for just a moment just to see if there are any questions. But the main purpose here is just to show that grabbing any field and then depending on where you want to put it um, is, is very quick and easy. So I'm going to pause to see if anything pops up in the chat. We're looking good. Awesome. OK, then what I'd like to do is show a couple of additional features that um, uh, exist within this, because I think it's important for folks to know. The display, in terms of a data table in particular, generally, the default cuts off at 100. 
right? So if you think about the way this would look on the output end, it would look like a web page, right? And um, it would be limited to right now 100 records. So if you're dealing with a large file, like a state level file that's got um, potentially thousands of records in it, this can be modified, right? And so your page could expand so that you could scroll if you wanted to on the web page to a greater amount. You'll notice that you can go all the way to 5,000. I don't know if that's super user-friendly, right? But let's say we want more than 100, we want 250 records displayed, then when it's in the output, it would be able to, the user could scroll up to 250 records. Okay. Um, so that, that is one piece just wanted to show again, because some when we first started this, it was like, why is it cutting off, kind of truncating at a weird spot? And then we figured that out pretty quickly. Um, a quick how-to helped us. Uh, how to video showed us how to do that. Um, you can have a summary row, right? So if you wanted to aggregate information and have that, a bottom row that has like a grand total, that could be included. It's um, for this purpose, it doesn't make sense, but do know that you could have that, right? You do have the sorting features um, in terms of ascending and descending. If you wanted a secondary sort, um, do you know that on the user end, the user can sort simply by clicking in any column. And um, that covers kind of some of the features that exist there. I want to transition to how to put the filters in or the controls, right? And so I'm um, going to navigate here to the top. You'll notice that there's a, um, a, a link for add a control. When you click on that, you're going to get a list of options. Do you want a drop down list? Do you want a fixed list, an input box? Um, and uh, some type of advanced filter, a slider, right? If you want to control for some values, there's an option for sliders and or checkbox. Um, right now, I'm just going to simply put in a drop down list. It's the, the one that we, we're, we're most commonly using in a, in a file like this where there might be multiple options. And again, notice everything's click and drag, and, and you just simply let the system know where you want it, and it places it there. What happened right now is you'll notice it, it just grabbed arbitrarily the first record, or excuse me, the, the, the first cell, right? Which is academic year, that's that, that's that header in the very first column. That control field exists right here. You can see where it says control field says academic year. I might not want that. I might want, in this case, since we're just in a San Diego County file only, I'm gonna change that to district name, right? And so for the purpose of this tool now, this first controller would control for district. I'd like to include another controller, another control field. I'm going to do another drop-down list. And notice, not only does it allow you to click and drag, it's also giving you the alignment tool. So when we think about you know, visually how it's going to look, um, it's nice. So if you do put multiple controls, um, by having that option, they're, they're aligned and not, you know, um, um, you know, uh, what do I want to say, out of alignment or, or visually not looking as um, clean as, as you would like it. So those tools are helpful. And for this one, I'm going to put in reporting category, which we renamed student group earlier, if you recall that. Notice it didn't change right here in the available field. I'm going to change that more on the output end. So I'm going to change it here, reporting category. But just like we did in the other fields, I'm going to name this student group. If I could spell, it'd be dangerous. And so now we've included two controllers, a controller for district name and student group. So let's just look at this um, in terms of the output end. What would the end user see? There's the view button at the top in the menu bar. And this is now what this display would look like. And you'll notice where we have district name. Now all of our districts exist. Um, so I don't know, I'm just gonna grab one. Let's just say we want Oceanside only. That controller now has taken the data, the data set and limited it to Oceanside only. And what you're gonna notice, any student group that that um, district has, in this case, you, those student groups are populating there. You get the total number of suspensions and the suspension count, right? So that, that is great. Let's say we want to have, I'm going to go back and choose, um, just set it back to all districts. 
But now let's say, um, I wanna see all districts, but I'm curious about a particular student group. Let's see how, um, let me do a student group. Let's do students with disabilities, right? So if I choose only, right? And again, it's just simply applying a filter. Now I have all of our um, LEAs in our district, in our county, excuse me, we're controlling exclusively for students with disabilities and we're getting suspension rates, right? And then by sorting, clicking at the top of the column, I'm able to quickly compare and see what the performance is as it relates to overall suspensions for our, our various school districts. So again, this can be done in DataQuest. However, what ends up happening here is this functionality doesn't exist in DataQuest um, without having to apply multiple filters. And it's, you know, if you wanted to see district performance for students with disabilities, that doesn't exist. You'd have to go into each district and look at their students with disabilities information. And you'd have to toggle from district to district. So this, just by bringing this into Google Data Studio, I can do this all here in one view. So let's say I wanted to see students with disabilities and homeless students. Now notice these are, um, these could be duplicated counts. This isn't necessarily an unduplicated pupil count, but just pointing out that we could then, if we sort here by district name, for example, let's look at Vista Unified. They have both categories. So they have, um, we have the total suspensions and the suspension rates. Um, when I look at Warner, you'll notice only students with disabilities. That's a very small school district and it's likely that they do not have any homeless students, right? And so, or any homeless students that were suspended, I should say. So um, it's, it is a nice way when we think about maybe some questions that folks might have around, you know, what's the performance across the county or um, one that we might have if we have the entire state file how is performance looking different from county to county for a specific student group, right? And so again, this tool, you saw in just about 10 minutes how we were able to just take a quick data set and build out a visualization with a couple of controls. And um, it didn't require any programming language. It didn't require, um, I'll be the first one to admit that you know I've used Power BI, but I'm definitely a novice level user. And I'm often frustrated because I just can't get what I want as quickly as I want. And it's simply because I'm just not trained well enough to be able to do it. It's not that that tool isn't the better tool. It's just that for this purpose, we can build something out in 30 minutes around an entire state data file and then share it with any user within our um, county office and it's up and running. And so in terms of efficiency, in terms of in, uh, kind of importing data and, and, and getting it into an output very quickly, it's, um, it's just super efficient for us. I'm going to go back to edit view, and I see that we have a couple of questions in the chat. Ah, yes, thank you. Can you set two filters and request a student group? No. Uh, you can, yes. So Nancy, to answer your question, you can. Um, again, what I built here isn't quite so sophisticated in terms of being able to do that, but you can apply multiple filters. And um, in fact, with the, the graduation report here, you can see we could do multiple pieces and um, by adding additional controllers, um, you, it gives you a lot more flexibility. So to answer your question, yes. Um, can the tool compare suspension rates? Absolutely. And so um, one thing that I'll, I'll demonstrate right now, but I don't have a file prep, you'll notice that you can add data. So I can bring in another data set. So for example, if we think about these CDE research files, I could bring in the 2019-20 data set, the 1819 and the 1718, and I could build out a three-year view. So I would be um, bringing in fields, like maybe total suspensions in this case, for each of those years and building that out. And then what I'm not getting into today, just simply because of time, is certainly you could build out any charts or visualizations. So I do want to show you this, that all of these features are in here. And so the data table is kind of the start point, but then thinking about which graphic representation, which visualization best you know, um, suits the need for what the information you're, you're trying to share with your end user, right? So if we think about those design principles of, of, of good visualizations, you know, matching it with what the intended outcome is in terms of the, what you want folks to know, um, you have all these options available, and just like you saw here, they're all customizable. So I didn't mention this, but there are themes that are available. 
right? And again, these are already embedded in here, but that allows you to, you know, in terms of the coloring, the, um, the various options that exist, uh, those are already pre-canned and built in. There are layout options, right? And I'm gonna point to one right now that, let me see if it's in here. Uh, anyway, th there's some options here for um, the, the way it will look visually. Let me go back. One thing I wanted to point out, style. This is where I wanted to be. So when I'm in the data table, if I go to style, this is where you have some control over the display of the data table. And you'll notice that we have these row numbers here. That is a default that always is built into the system. It shows up. But I don't want those, right? Typically, I, we don't, we wouldn't use those. So by simply deselecting that, now my academic year is the first thing that shows up, right? And if that's what I want, if I don't want academic year, I could certainly pull that field and remove it. Right? You'll notice here too, where it says um, missing data. How do you want that data represented, right? Right now it's showing up as null, but it, we could have it show up as no data, right? You could have it show up as a dash, you can have it show up as a blank. So let's just go ahead and just choose the, the dash, right? Because it's certainly not a zero. It's not a zero value. It's just a value that, uh, that there isn't a value there. And so if we went back to, let me go to my view. And this was sorted. Let me just go this other direction. I don't have any null values right now. Okay, no problem. But anyway, you would see a dash here if we had any of the null values, would no longer say null. You're seeing them under the district name right there. Thank you. Got it, thank you. Yeah, and so there we are. Thank you very much. Right, and if we had values over here, it would do the same. So anywhere that were there was a null. So what I want to do here, there's only a, a couple minutes left. I know that we're, we're building in a passing period. I'm happy to stay on the line, but I think what I'd like to do, I'm going to stop sharing for the moment and just see if there are any questions and or I'm curious to hear from your perspective um, based on what you saw. And I know this was a very high level <laughs> flyby here. Um, are there any insights that were gained from this experience or um, things you're considering and or have you used the platform before and have any um, anything to share with the other folks in the room? I, I have a question if you don't mind. Yeah. So um, we've used the platform before and actually we used it with a, a tied it into our, our ERP and we were doing reporting off of data and um, we were just kind of playing around with it. And what we realized, number one is, and I think this is true with most data visualizations, is there's a lag time. It's not a real time draw. It's like a 15 minute, which is okay. Mm -hmm. But then we had a, a problem and I wanted to ask you, how do you deal with this? How do you update your data if your data is being pulled from a Google sheet? So the next year comes around, do you rebuild everything? Do you just delete the data and repost the data? So I'm going to be completely transparent with you. This is our first year of using it. So we are at the point where I would say we're at baseline. Thing is the initial year we, we aren't in a scenario yet where we're pulling in new data so i have not encountered that um yet okay be great consideration what so you haven't found a workaround or that that's something that well what we did was we um and I'm, I'm i missed the point on your presentation we tie it to google sheets is that what you did on your presentation For this demo i did but we've also uploaded straight from csv files like we have an excel workbook and just uh saved it as a CSV and uploaded it. Yeah, so what our goal was, and I don't, we haven't figured this one out yet, but I think that it's achievable. It was to tie it into a database. Yeah. Like pull it, and then that way, whenever the database is updating, it's obviously gonna update the uh, visualization. Absolutely, and um, in the original, where, where it shows you where you can capture your source data, it has you know options for SQL and other pieces. So yeah, if it's, if it's a live database, and then it should update. I mean, it's my understanding, but again, we're not using that way. So I don't, I don't want to commit <laughs> an answer to that. Um, 
we're essentially using these static annual research reports that are coming in, again, just from an end user, user perspective, so people can kind of filter and get um, to the information they want a little more quickly and easily than, than via data quest. Um, so this is, like I said, that's, this is a very specific use case. If folks are looking at using this as more, maybe their, their platform across the board for more real-time reporting, we're not there yet. Yeah, understood. Other thoughts, insights? And Jim, that was really helpful. Thank you, because you, you got me already thinking about what this looks like in the future moving forward. I know that's always the hard part, right? Is you find a great tool and then all of a sudden you, you switch over to the new fiscal year and you're like, oh. Yeah, now what, right? Yeah. Uh, there was a, a, a comment there in the chat directed towards you, Jim. Interested in hearing about how you might be building a, a database related to this. So that's coming from Oxnard. Yeah, so, um, so Stephen, I, I really do like how you use Data Studio. And when we stumbled on it, I think the biggest uh, benefit that the system has is its ease, like just that one. Yeah. But more importantly, we didn't have to like train anybody how to use it. It's Google. So we just sent them the link and they used it. And so what we did was, there was always a problem where people didn't know um, what does their reporting structure look like? You know, who's my boss, who's that boss's boss and, and so forth. Am I in the right reporting structure? So we built that little tool in data studio. So you can select any, for example, you can select any person, Jim Carrillo, and it would show you everybody that reports to them. And then that way they could say, oh, this is wrong or that's wrong. And then they can go to HR and say, could you update this data? So that's how we used it. Any other thoughts, questions? Um, I'm new to this and I am excited about this. This looks super easy to use and, and very intuitive and um, really friendly for, for the user. So um, I, I'm looking forward to starting to dive into this and, and take some of my data and, and see what I can do with it. Thank you for that um, very, very clear explanation and demonstration. Sure. sure. No, thanks, Nancy. And, and uh, certainly if you come up with any great ideas too, I'd love to partner with you. Sure. Absolutely. All right. So we are at time. Again, thank you all. I, I hope that was helpful and informative. Like I said, I know that was a very entry level, quick flyby of the tool. Um, uh, my contact information is in the slide deck. Let me just share that really quick one more time. Happy to connect with folks um, offline or if, if um, oops, hold on. Let me see my email. <laughs> Here we go. Um, my contact information, so it's stephen.green at sdcoe.net and my phone number is there. Um, if, if you do want to learn more or you know have some specific questions, we're happy to help out. Also, um, I'm always curious. I mean, Jim, thank you for sharing. Uh, we're in the learning space ourselves. You know, we, we have a very specific use and we're trying to just get some of these annual data reports out into the hands of users in, in a quick and friendly way for them to be able to utilize it. But, um, you know, again, that's a very limited use case at this point. So if you are building things out or if you have examples, please um, send those my way and let us know at SVCOE so that, um, again, I, I, some kind a learning collaborative or folks that might want to get together occasionally where we are open to it I think is a great tool that could support us and again um, there are many more sophisticated tools that I think are you know are wonderful but some of us just aren't at that level and we need to turn things out quickly so for us this is, has been a helpful solution all right so with that, thank you, everyone. Um, Steven, can you post the link to the slide deck one last time, please? Absolutely, yeah. Let me just pull that up real quick. Um, thank you again, everyone, for, uh, for joining us.